Hey friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the brand new Hello Bluebird Jungle King stamp set. So I've stamped those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm beginning with my lions, and I chose Y13, YR21, and YR23. I started with that YR23, and I just refilled all of my markers the other night, so I had a little bit of spillage on this guy. Not to worry, I am going to be able to cover that up, and you won't be able to tell from the final image. Luckily, all of that color stayed within his mane, which is gonna be a darker brown anyway, so it was no big deal. I just took the other cap off to help equalize the pressure in the barrel, and I also grabbed a piece of scrap cardstock on the side and just scribbled off some of that excess ink, and then it was fine. So then I'm moving on to blending out with the YR21. And then I'm going to jump straight down to the Y13 because I really wanted to warm this combo up a bit. So I'm going to add that to the highlighted areas on his hindquarters and his paws and the top of his face. It wasn't quite dark enough for me though. I really wanted a bit more contrast. So I did decide to do a second layer and to introduce one darker color, I brought in the YR24. So I'm just gonna continue to do this second layer, adding in that shade to deepen things up a bit. So I'm gonna blend out with the YR23, and then I did bring in some of that YR21, taking that almost all the way down, and then I'll just use a little bit of that Y13 in the center, to warm up that combo and just make it a bit more of a golden kind of yellow brown. I didn't quite like the transition areas between the YR21 and the Y13, so I just did a little tip to tip action with both of those shades to um, smooth that out and was much happier with that. And then I'm gonna move on to coloring my second little guy. And this time I'm jumping straight in with that YR24 and doing his shadows as well, all down the back of his body, on the underside of his arms and around his face, especially on the right hand side, since his head is tipped a little bit more toward the ground. And I'll just continue working my way through from darkest to lightest to fill him completely in. There are so many cute little lions in this set. There's five different lions that you can color and I think each one of them is so adorable. But I just really fell in love with this little guy napping. I think he's super darling and uh, yeah, I just had to use him on a card. I am doing a second layer on him as well, just real quick and easy to beef up that saturation and get him to the same level of depth as the other guy is. Keeping those highlights on his belly and the tops of his legs and the center of his face. And then I will color in the tail with the YR23. And I just did that singly since um, it's such a small area. I did that for both of them. And then I'm gonna bring in R20 and R22 for the cheeks and the insides of the ears. Just a little of that R22 because it is quite dark. And then blending that out with the R20 to soften that into the rest of the golden yellow tones. Then for the mane, I wanted to have a nice rich brown and I wanted to go pretty dark because I needed to cover up the marker spillage there. So I'm going to use E55, E57, and E59. Placing that E59 closest around the face and then blending out with the E57. And I'm making sure to work back and forth over the edge of that E59 so that I don't have any harsh lines left behind. And then I'll fill in all the area on the outer part of the mane with the E55 and just doing that same thing, just making sure to grab the edge of the E57 and pull that into this lighter area 
so that the blend is nice and smooth there. And I really like this combo with that golden yellow brown for the lions. I think it looks really rich and um, it ended up not too dark by adding in that E55. I'm going to color the tail to match and then I'll do the same for the other little guy. Just starting again with that E59 closest to the face. I think you could do it either way. If you wanted to put the darker colors on the outside, that would work too. But I just figured the part that is the highest is the part that's catching the light the most. So that's why I went ahead and put my highlight on all of those little tips. I really love the richness of the tones that these guys turned out, but I think it would also be fun to color them in really pale shades, so I think I might try to do that next time I color these little lions, because I think that would be really soft and sweet, maybe perfect for like a baby card. So yeah, let me know if you'd like to see some softer coloring in the future. So I'm going to move on to the trees and I wanted to use a different brown than I had used for the lion's manes. So I decided to go with E43, E44, and E47. And I'm going to add a little bit of shading on the right side of all of the branches. I really love these trees. I think they look gorgeous and really help to set a scene. Um, this stamp set is one of the taller stamp sets, which is always nice because they can pack a lot more images and sentiments in it. This one has five different sentiments as well. So yeah, lots of good stuff here. So for both of those trees, I started with the E47 and then blended that out with the E44 and then used the E43 for a highlight on the left hand side but either side would have worked. I think it just depends on how you want to stage your scene or where you want to put your light source. But I'm gonna move on to the stone and do that in some warm grays I'm using W1, W3, W5, and W7. So I'll add some little shading bits here and there to make the stone not look flat with that W7 and then blend out with the W5. I'll fill in most of the rest with the W3, but I'm going to save a little highlight area in two spots for that W1. For the grasses, I decided to go with G94 and G99, and I'm just using the two shades since it's such a small, skinny little area. Um, the G94 has a darker cap than the G99, so I accidentally picked up the lighter shade first. So I was wondering why it was so light. I thought, um, shouldn't this little be a little bit darker as a, you know, a 99 shade? Um, but anyway, I just had the wrong marker in my hand. So I went back and added a bit of that G99 in, and then I'm going to go back to that G94 and blend that back out again. And you'll see in the final card that I did stamp and color and die cut one more of those shorter little patches of grass. Um, I just wanted to have three on the card once I got to it, once I started laying things out and seeing where I wanted to put everything, I realized I needed one more. So I stamped and colored that off screen just to save time in the video because I didn't realize it until after I had already done this portion of the coloring. And for the tops of the trees, I wanted to go with something that would match but be a little bit different in tone. And I ended up choosing G40, G43, and G46. So I'm going to place that G46 down at the bottom of the tree and then blend up with the G43. And I'm doing little circular scribbly motions as I lay that in and pull the edge of the G43 up because there's quite a bit of difference between those two shades and I really wanna make sure that the blend is nice and smooth. And I'll do the same thing when I get to the G40. And then I'll do the other tree just the same as well. And then I'm going to go back and add some detail to them in a minute. But I wanted to let that ink dry so that the little dot detail that I'm going to add will stand out on top. So you want to let it dry for maybe 
30 seconds to a minute and then you should be good to go. But um, once I have that filled in, I'm just gonna go back. Uh, I actually did a second layer on there because I really wanted to increase the depth of especially that darkest shade, but I just felt like the trees were a bit too light for my taste. So I'm gonna just repeat all of those layers on both of those. And one thing I like to do on the second layer is not take it up quite as high as I did the first time. And especially with that lightest shade, I like to leave a little area that only had the one coat of that on there. So it just uh, makes it even lighter, keeps a nicer highlight there. And then, like I said, I'm gonna go in with some dot detail just to help it look like little leaves. I did it with the G46 first and then the G43. I'm gonna leave the top blank. And then I also wanted to add in a little bit of the G99. So just a few little dots of that closest to the bottom and super small. And then I did go back with a few more of the G46 and the G43 just layering those dots on top of each other. And then I'll take a little of the G40 to kind of blend over the top ones to help push them back into the tree a little bit softer. And then I'll trim these images out with their matching dies. For the background, I've taken a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and I've die cut that with the third largest of the nesting decal dies. And I'm going to watercolor a background using some Distress Oxide inks. I'm starting with some Bundled Sage, and I also have some Rustic Wilderness. So I'm going to use quite a bit of that Bundled Sage, just kind of putting in little patches here and there. And then I pulled in some of the Rustic Wilderness. The Rustic Wilderness was way too dark, so I added quite a bit of water to that and kind of blended it in to the Bundled Sage. Then I'm going to clean off that acrylic block that I've been pressing my ink onto and I'm going to add some antique linen because I wanted this to be kind of like um, more of like what you would see in the desert area, the safari. So I am adding some little patches of dirt or whatever along with the little patches of grass. And I will blend that up toward the... Um, like two thirds mark on that cardstock. And then I'm gonna bring in mustard seed for the sky. And I probably should have pulled out squeeze lemonade instead, cause this was a little bit dark, but I just added a lot of water to it. I wanted to have kind of a really bright um, yellowish sky as if the sun were really high and hot overhead. And I ended up mixing some of that mustard seed in with the antique linen to soften that up. And I liked that look as well. So I'm just blending that all together and um, leaving some white space around the edges. It had a little more white space down at the bottom than the top. So I decided to just add a bit more color down there, really soft and make that more even. And then I'm gonna set this aside to dry after it has, I wanted to do some speckle detail, so I'm going to use some gathered twigs for that. I wanted something that was darker, so I'm going to add some water and mix that up. And This time I'm switching to a very thin paintbrush so I can get a really fine splatter. I'm not going to do too much, just a little bit here and there. And then I'm also going to mix up some of my Gansai Tambi Starry Colors and splatter that on the background. So I'll get some nice gold flecks that will be reflective when you tip the card into the light. So once I'm happy with how that's looking, I will set that aside to dry completely. And then once it has, I will pop it into my Misty so that I can stamp my sentiment. I'm gonna use Versafine Onyx Black ink. And the sentiment that I chose says, wishing you a roaring good day. I'm going to stamp that twice to make sure it is nice and bold on the card. And then I will pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using Lawn Fawn Sticky Note cardstock and I'm going to stamp in Doe ink. So I'm taking another one of the lions and another sentiment that says, You Rule. So I think this could work for a birthday card or just any general 
day card. So just wishing you a good day. So I'm going to switch to some pattern paper now. I'm flipping through the uh, Cartabella here, there, and everywhere six by six pad. And I chose this olive green print. And I just trimmed that out with my paper trimmer to be four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's the same size as my A2 standard size card. I'll glue that down to cover the entire card front. And then I've added some foam tape to the back of the focal panel. So I can pop that up and give it a bit of dimension. It's going to add a nice drop shadow around the deckled edges of that focal panel. And then I'm going to start laying out my images. I like to lay them out first most of the time to kind of get an idea of where I want things to go. I wanted to kind of layer these trees one on top of each other, so I was just figuring out that placement before I committed to it. I decided to add the smaller tree that's kind of leaning toward the right behind toward the top and kind of frame up the sentiment on that side with that tree. So I'm just holding that down into place and then I'm going to layer the second one over top. So I'm just using my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue with that super fine nozzle to get behind all of those little pieces. And I love that the die cut actually cuts out those little portions between the branches. I think it looks so much nicer when dies do that. So I was so happy about that. So those are going to frame up the left hand side of the card. And then I'll have my lions out in front. So I'm just laying those out for placement. And then I can figure out the rest of these accessory images as well. My original thought had been to place that stone over on the left hand side, but I ended up taking up more space with those trees than I originally planned. So I'm going to end up moving that, um, but I did want to put the tall grasses over on the right, kind of balance out the tall trees. So I am going to adhere him down in front of that and then try to create like a little nest for him. I figured he would try to find a, a little patchy area to nap in out of the sun. I'm going to tuck that large rock behind him because it's got some of those grasses. So that I'll push that back further in the scene and then I'll add the other lion down in front of the trees. And then I've got those three grasses, like I mentioned. So I'm going to put one behind the lion's tail. That'll also kind of mimic the grasses over on the right hand side. And then I have another little patch that uh, I thought might look cute tucked behind the lion. Wasn't quite sure where I wanted to put that. I decided to put it down in front. But then I am going to take that other little patch. I just felt like there was too much space below the sentiment and I wanted to fill that in a little bit more. So I decided to place that third patch of grass back where I had the second one. Just kind of take up a little bit more of that empty room. And then I wanted to add a few more dots just to fill in some of that background. So I'm going to fake it with a Copic marker. I'm going to use the E57 and just add a few little dots here and there and kind of fill in that background a little bit more. Since this is a pretty masculine card, I decided not to add any Stardust stickles, but it does still have that gold shimmer on it for a little bit of an accent. So that is going to finish off this card. I'll give you another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed seeing these brand new products in action. I absolutely adore these lions and can't wait to use them again. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll have lots more content using the brand new release in the coming days and weeks. And all of the products I used today will be listed and linked for you down below. If you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. And thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye!